animals, uh, and that's donkeys and not worms. So I'm going to spend the next 20 minutes or so talking about some of the common things that live in our donkeys. And most of what I'm saying also applies to horses, mules and zebras. You never know, somebody out there might have one. And don't think equids are alone in having worms. All mammals have the potential to be harboring worms. Here's a human tapeworm in the middle of the picture, the longest of which has been recorded at 82 feet or 25 meters. And did you know the general term for worms is helminths? And it's from this word that the term anthelmintics comes, the name for the dewormers that we use. In this and the next talk, we'll take a look at the various classes of worms and some internal parasites that aren't worms at all. We'll talk about stomach worms that produce skin lesions and worms where as few as 50 can kill. And just so you know, ringworm isn't a worm, but a fungus. So we won't be talking about that at all. We'll see what anthelmintics do and what they don't do. And crucially, what you can do to significantly reduce the worm burden our donkeys carry that doesn't involve any products at all. And why roll of sellotape is part of every equine vet's toolkit. Textbooks seem set on causing confusion because they talk about red worms and round worms as well as tapeworms. So let's sort this one out first. Apart from tapeworms, which are flat in cross-section, all the other worms are round in cross-section, hence the term roundworm. And actually, all roundworms are whitish in colour. But because some of them suck the donkey's blood for a living and have a thin skin, they actually look red because you can see right through them. So what we have in the roundworm category are the small redworm, the large redworm, the ascarid worm, which is so thick skinned that it always looks white, even when full of a blood meal, the lungworm, the threadworm and the pinworm. And as we'll see, these all potentially do damage in different ways. Look in the books and you're likely to read about endless complicated life cycles of the various organisms that live inside our donkeys. Some of them involving not only the donkey, but also dogs, foxes, snails, and insects. What's really important to appreciate is that no internal parasites complete their life cycle entirely within the donkey or horse. You can see from this diagram that part of their life cycle is spent inside the donkey, the brown part of the cycle, and part of it is outside on the pasture. That's the green part of the cycle. No internal parasites spend their entire life within the donkey. The crucial thing here is the term life cycle. If we understand that the perpetuation of the worms depends on a cycle of events and that each part of the cycle has to happen, we are in a much stronger position to take control before we resort to drugs that are getting more and more expensive and less and less effective. But more of that later. Let's have a look at the tapeworm first. The adult worms congregate at the junction between the small and large intestine and have sharp teeth, which they use to bite into the gut wall to feed. The picture at the bottom right is a fabulous close-up of a tapeworm head, and you can see the band of sharp teeth. Tapeworms are made of segments which contain several eggs, and it's these segments that you may see in the poo. Eggs in the poo are eaten by forage mites, that's one at the top right of the slide, and develop into larvae. And the mites that are on the pasture will inadvertently be eaten by the donkey. The larvae mature into adults in the donkey and start producing eggs and thus the cycle is completed. 
A large tapeworm burden could cause colic, but tapeworms are rarely found at post-mortem examination in donkeys in most parts of the country. A poo sample may give a false negative result as the tapeworm don't shed eggs every day. So you may pick a piece of poo for lab analysis that has no eggs in it and therefore gives you a false negative result. One way to overcome this is to take samples on three consecutive days and submit those for testing as there is more chance of some tapeworm eggs being present over that period of time. We'll talk a lot more about poo samples next time. Both blood and saliva tests to detect the presence of tapeworm have been developed for use in horses, but have not been validated in donkeys. However, it's worth asking your vet about this as some are using these tests for donkeys. It's also worth asking your vet or local horse and donkey keepers if they have confirmed tapeworm infestation in their animals as there are regional differences and a lot of areas in the UK don't seem to have tapeworm. Bots are not worms at all, but the larvae of the bot fly, which is active in the summer months. The fly, which is about the size of a bee, lays sticky eggs on the legs of donkeys and horses, of course. Donkeys will lick these off during normal grooming and the eggs get swallowed. Once in the stomach, they develop into the larvae. You can see those on the top right. In large numbers, they can cause gastric ulceration. They will hang around in the donkey until the following spring when they're passed out in the dung and develop into adult, adult bots ready to enjoy their one and only summer. What you can do is use a bot knife, which has a serrated edge to remove the eggs from the donkey's coat as you can see in the pictures in the middle. Threadworms are tiny little white roundworms, less than one centimeter long and rarely of any consequence in the adult donkey, but they can get into the udder and therefore pass to newborn foals in the milk, which can result in foal diarrhea. Information about special worming protocols for pregnant mares and foals will be available on the Facebook page after these talks. Now, liver fluke are not worms at all and are not equine specific. They're about one to two centimeters long and their life cycle includes a water snail. So they're fairly geographically specific being found in wetter areas. For example, where I come from in Devon where it rains for at least 366 days a year. And these fluke are the epitome of young, free and single because they are a hermaphrodite, male and female all rolled into one. They don't lay eggs every day. So like the tapeworm test, false negative results are possible. They're common in cattle and sheep and something to be considered if your donkeys are sharing grazing with farm stock. Co-grazing is really useful a sheep will inadvertently eat the donkey worm larvae off the pasture, thus reducing the number of donkey worm larvae available for the donkey to eat and vice versa. No harm comes to either donkeys or sheep and cattle by eating each other's worm larvae. They're acting as biological hoovers, if you like, cleaning up the pasture for each other. The only downside is that if the sheep or cattle are infested with fluke, then the donkeys could become infested too. And there are no licensed treatments for equids, but cattle and sheep drugs can be used as we'll touch on next time. There's an awful lot of hype about donkeys being responsible for spreading lungworm to horses. And yes, this is perfectly possible. Horses can get quite severe signs, coughing and loss of performance. Donkeys very rarely cough if they have lungworm. And this is why they have the reputation of being silent carriers. And let's face it, how often do you put your donkey's athletic performance to the test? Here they are in the large airways of a donkey at post-mortem examination. 
the airways have been cut open to visualize the worms. The good news is that the testing for lungworm can be carried out and treatment is currently very effective, but more of that next time. Penworms. These live in the rectum of donkeys and the female pokes out of the donkey's anus and deposits her sticky eggs on the anus itself. You really couldn't make this up, could you? You can imagine how itchy this must be. And so the animal does what it can to relieve the itch by rubbing its tail head against anything and everything. Now, I don't want to get into an argument as I suspect most of you already know who wins in the intelligence stakes, but the picture in the middle is a horse's tail head. The poor thing has been rubbing like mad to scratch that itch to little effect, except for the typical scrubbing brush appearance of its tail. The donkey, however, uses its superior intelligence to get right to the bottom of the problem. I rest my case. The worm is easy to identify because it tapers from head to tail, with the tail end being no wider than a pin. And this is where the sellotape comes in as a good diagnostic tool. We can use sellotape placed across the anus to which any eggs will stick. And we can then look at the sellotape down a microscope to see if we can spot the pinworm eggs. The worms are visible to the naked eye, of course, but the eggs aren't. We'll talk about worming products next time, but a really good part of dealing with this particular pain in the bum is to wash the area well every day and then apply a nice emollient cream to prevent the area getting sore. This will help to remove the eggs and help to break the life cycle. Ascarids are huge. And this is the worm that is often called the roundworm. Up to 40 centimeters or 15 inches long and as thick as earthworms. And this is the clue to their danger. The small intestine where they live is only about six centimeters or two and a half inches in diameter. So it doesn't take many of these huge worms to cause a blockage. There are particular worry in foals where the small intestine is even smaller. The picture in the middle is that of a ruptured gut in a foal. The rupture caused by a heavy burden of ascarids. Now horses tend to develop an immunity to these worms by the time they're mature, but donkeys don't seem to mount an immune response and therefore can harbor them for life. And even worse, the eggs can survive on the pasture for years. These, by the way, are the most common worms found in humans. And can you see the worm in the poo in the bottom right-hand picture? This is the same size as an ascarid, but it's actually an earthworm just enjoying a delicious meal. The stomach worm causes no known internal health issues, but its life cycle includes the house fly and stable fly, both of which eat the worm eggs in the poo, and these develop into larvae within the flies and may get deposited on the donkey in the places where the flies usually land notably around the eyes, mouth, genitals, or on any wound. This results in a chronic skin lesion as the larvae cause an inflammatory reaction, which can be confused with other skin conditions. The common name for the lesions is summer sores. And who would have thought that these were caused by a worm that lives in the stomach? The large red worm is not that large really at about four centimeters. They have a relatively long life cycle taking several months to complete it. The potentially dangerous thing about these worms is that they don't stay in the gut but migrate around the body and tend to congregate in one of the major blood vessels supplying the gut. And if they cause the vessel to become so damaged that it ruptures, that could cause a fatal hemorrhage. Small redworm, otherwise known as cyathostomins, are the most universally present threat to our donkeys, 
So let's look at these in a bit more detail. Only a couple of centimeters long, but they have a real sting in their tail. Their larval stages that have been eaten off the pasture by the donkey burrow into the gut wall to form tiny cysts. And they stay there for anything from a few days to a few years before emerging as an adult. Each red spot on the picture of the gut lining in the middle of the slide is actually a cyathostomin larva curled up in its cyst, just waiting for the right time to emerge. And you can see the holes they leave behind when they emerge in the picture at the top right. And when they do emerge, they tend to do it en masse, and this can cause a life-threatening disease syndrome. Widespread gut inflammation and leakiness, resulting in what can be a fatal loss of proteins. The gut lining has lost its integrity and is literally in holes. So no wonder it can't function properly. In horses, diarrhea is often present, but donkeys don't tend to get diarrhea. So it's not always so obvious just how seriously ill they are. To be brutally honest, this kills horses and donkeys if early and aggressive treatment is not carried out. If your gut doesn't do its job of absorbing nutrients, then no wonder you lose weight, feel grim, and may die. Prevention is absolutely key here. Now we've talked about life cycles quite a bit, so let's delve into the life cycle of this worm. Starting at the top of the diagram, we see that the larvae become adults in the large intestine and start laying eggs, thousands of eggs every day. The eggs can only go one way, and that's out the back end in the poo. Once outside the donkey, they hatch if conditions are right. They like it warm and moist. If the ground is frozen and the air very cold, they'll delay hatching or not hatch at all. But when the eggs do hatch, the resulting larvae hang around on the pasture only to get eaten by the donkey. Once swallowed, they pass into the large intestine and spend a variable amount of time buried in the gut wall in their cysts before emerging as an adult worm ready to produce thousands of eggs. And this whole cycle can happen in as little as six weeks, depending on how long the larvae stay encysted from just a few days to years. Nobody knows for sure what makes all the larvae emerge at the same time from their cysts to cause such serious illness. But it makes sense that they do it when they have the best chance of reproducing successfully. This is in the early spring when eggs produced will land on the pasture and develop into larvae when the environment is warm and moist and donkeys are grazing. So the life cycle is more likely to be perpetuated. No point laying eggs that get deposited in frost and snow as they're unlikely to develop into larvae. They might just as well hibernate in the gut wall until conditions get better. That's a seasonal region, reason for the mass emergence. The other reason that lots of larvae may emerge at the same time is if there is plenty of space for them to assume adulthood in the gut because there aren't many other adult worms around. Think of it like choosing between a crowded train where there is standing room only or waiting a while for the next train when you're guaranteed a comfortable seat. A worm's eye view of social distancing. And when would that happen? When would the gut be relatively uncrowded in terms of adult worms? Well, it could happen if your donkey has been wormed with a product that only kills the adult worms in the gut, but not the larval worms in the cysts. So what do we do next? Which products could help and which products may not? Now, ladies and gentlemen, 
I am just going to do my check on the audience and it looks like you're all leaving. So I think I've spoken for long enough. Delighted to see at least one horse attended. Do ask some questions and certainly come back next time for more about worms, wormers and worming. And in the meantime, enjoy your donkeys. And if you don't have donkeys of your own, enjoy this gorgeous bunch at the Safe Haven Sanctuary in Israel. I'll hope to see you soon and thanks for listening.